morning, everyone. It's time for Friday morning prayer and devotion, our last prayer session together for this week. And I do thank you for joining me. It's been quite a week and, uh, of course, some technical difficulties along the way. And I'm personally praying that we won't have any issues here this morning. Uh, but I'm so glad for this uh, prayer time that we get to share together each and every weekday morning. In our praise reports this morning, Cheryl LaChance thanks everyone for praying for her yesterday. Her COVID test came back negative, and she's very thankful for that. She does have severe sinus infection and bronchitis, so we'll be continuing to pray for Cheryl in that regard today. Sister Jennifer Jones gave birth to a healthy baby boy yesterday morning. Garrett Jackson Jones weighed six pounds, one ounce. He's 20 inches long and he has the thickest head of black hair you've ever seen on a baby or pretty much on anyone else. So we're thankful that everything went well for them and looking forward to meeting Garrett. In our prayer request this morning, Sister Judy Williams has a special unspoken request for her grandson, Michael. Rebecca Williams has a special unspoken request. We want to continue to remember uh, Stacy, who recently had heart surgery, and then yesterday suddenly lost her father. She needs our prayers for strength and comfort today, as does um, Brother Scott Smith, uh, who buried his mother yesterday. Scott Hutchinson was recently laid off of his job. He desires our prayers for employment. Carmen needs our continued prayers as she's uh, finishing up her first week uh, in her new job. Leslie Sutton fell down some steps yesterday and broke her ankle in multiple places. And this is going to require surgery. So let's remember Leslie today. Uh, we're praying for continued recovery for several who have had surgery recently or been in the hospital recently. Uh, Carmen's friend uh, donated a kidney last week. We're praying for continued recovery for her and for the recipient. Brother Steve Cummins uh, is facing possible cataract surgery has a test coming up on his eyes uh, in the next week or so. And so let's believe for a good result for him. Brother Terry Mizell recovering from surgery on his foot uh, that was done to remove some infected bone. Uh, Stacy, as we mentioned, is recovering from heart surgery. Uh, Christian has asked us to pray for Sheila with heart calf. Jamie Joe's dad needs our continued prayers for strength uh, for recovery after having ended up in the hospital recently while on a trip away from home out of state. Those who are battling cancer include Michael Boland, Linda Fox, Alicia Piero, Diane Escher, Claire, Marsha Moore's friend's grandparents, Jenny Coffey, James Graham's aunt, Kathy Bloss, John Fitzgerald, Aaron Payne, Kathy Burks, Kay, Dennis Phelps, Sylvia Lairmore, Ari Bowers, Edie Percival, Del Bishop, Lydia, Philip Randall, David Harris, Tanya Schutz, Dwayne Lewis, Nathan Van Ingman, Lisa Workman, Christy Smith, and a friend of Terry Adams. In our COVID-19 request this morning, Landon Cummins, Janice, Dana, and Shelley, Carmen's nephew Haddon, Marsha Moore's cousin, Janie Parrott, and Ashley, who has COVID and double pneumonia. At last word, she was in the hospital and we're trusting that her recovery is uh, taking hold. Uh, Carmen's nephew Haddon had been reported to be doing well with his recovery, and I'm sure that these others, many of them are doing well as uh, also. So let's continue praying until we hear the all clear for each of them. Others with lung and respiratory problems, Bonnie Pulaski, Cheryl LaChance, Robbie Northrup, and Kendra Ortiz. We have several children in need of continued prayer today. Baby Elsie and baby Brantley Joe have heart issues. Let's continue to remember them as well as Lorelei, Jenna, Tucker, and Myra battling cancer. Abel Ray suffering from PKU syndrome. Tano Lopez with spina bifida. Abram Page uh, born with GNAL1 disorder. And Christian Carr and Titus Dornbach with juvenile diabetes. Adults with diabetes include Tim Workman, Emily Stanley, Brother Pulliam, Cheryl LaChance, myself, J.R. Johnson, and Terry Adams' friend Marsha. Also, Kristen's neighbor Natalie uh, is diabetic, also has a, a, some GI issues. She's just under lots of stress. 
and needed God to hold her family together right now. Others with GI issues include Michael Parrott, Olivia, Terry Adams, Regina Marlin's granddaughter Aubrey, and Pastor Mark Gobby's daughter uh, who has gastroparesis. We're praying for Beulah Ziegler, my mother-in-law, uh, Ron Bryant, my father, and then also Tim Workman and Russ today for healing of Parkinson's disease. We're praying for those who need restoration and healing after suffering stroke. These include Sheila Sappington, Tina's mother, Shannon Kelly, and evangelist Billy Huey. Continuing on with our prayer list this morning, we need to pray for Heather Spence, who has a sleeping issue and also some stomach problems. Uh, Jenny Perkins' dad dealing with uh, kidney stones. Jim Connor awaiting a kidney transplant. Brother Virgil Pullian's brother needs healing of his kidneys, as well as cirrhosis of the liver and pancreatitis. Jamie Jo Day needs healing of her liver. Uh, we're praying for several with heart issues today, including um, Melvin, this is Brenda Storms, um, friend, Jake Billingsley, Pastor Steve Sullivan's father, Cheryl Chance, and Kenny Prenzel. Those with back issues include Bob O, Melena Cummins, Britt Moore, James Graham, Terry Adams, Michael Parrott, Carol Dixon's pastor, Pam Pulliam's daughter Jenny, and Tammy Lawson. Renee needs healing of her hips and knees. Rebecca Williams has pain in her legs. Barbara Owens and Bob Perkins are both battling with shingles. Uh, other health needs today, Meredith, Jimmy Holden, Bobby Larmy, Nicole, Regina Bishop, Morgan, Kevin Gossett, Shirley Ruminer, Chloe Isaac, Judy Williams' sister Mary, and Shirley Garner. My grandfather, Ellis Marshall, remains on hospice care, as does J.B. Goforth. Let's remember them and, of course, their families today. In our family needs this morning, let's remember James and Angela Graham and their family, Dee Dee Sealert's biological father and his family, Annette and Dave, Grace's best friend's family, Alicia, Rebecca Rush's family, Marcia and Britt Moore needing prayer for direction for their son Josh, Baby G's adoption, and also Debbie Biddick's daughters today uh, continuing to pray for reconciliation uh, in the family. And our spiritual needs this morning, let's remember Regina Marlin's family, Art Chandler, Marsha Moore's children and granddaughter, Cheryl's family member, Josiah, Terry Adams' children, Andrea Perkins, the Vaughn family, Haley, Evie, Rose, Carl, and Connor needing salvation, Amy, Josh, Jamie, Dan, Dalton, Charles, and Dylan needing deliverance from drug addiction. We need prayer for our Mingo Residential Care residents, for Mingo Job Corps students, for Pam Pulliam's children, Charles and Amber Gossett, Barbara Owens, Jennifer and Brenda's family, Sheila Outlaw, Marcia's friend and her family, Judy and Mike Williams' family, Mark and Caitlin, Beulah's family, and Caroline Sexton's family. We're believing for revival in every community, and we know that God desires to use us uh, to that end. Let's pray that God would help us to be open to his will, to be sensitive to his spirit, and to be able to hear his voice and follow the directions that he gives us to accomplish his will in the earth. Uh, this month's missionary prayer focus is on North American missionaries to Perryville, Missouri, Dennis and Renee Breland. Let's continue holding them up in prayer. Also believe for breakthrough in brand new church plants in Bloomfield, uh, Kabul, and in Branson under the leadership of uh, Joel Mitchell, um, Marty DeLott, and Kyle Lloyd, respectively. We thank God for all that's being accomplished in the kingdom. And if I could ask you for a prayer this morning that may not seem too significant, um, but we have our Joy to the World Christmas dinner and uh, comedy show coming up next Saturday. We're right down to crunch time, lots of preparation going on to trying to bring everything together. And we'd appreciate everyone's prayers for um, everything to go smoothly with that. And also pray for some decent weather, at least decent weather that day. Doesn't have to be a beautiful day, but we'd love for it not to be storming or sleeting or snowing or anything like that. God bless each and every one of you this morning for.
being a part of this prayer team. And I welcome you, uh, Judy and Kristen and Pam Sherman. Good to see you this morning. And uh, a few others that I can't uh, see your names this morning, but if you are out there, throw up those prayer hands, hit the like or love button, share the video with someone uh, who needs to be a part of uh, this encouraging ministry and whatever you can do to increase visibility of these videos and increase pr participation will be a blessing to someone uh, this morning and we thank you for that. I want to take you to the word of the Lord this morning in Matthew chapter 20, Matthew chapter number 20 and we're going to read beginning in verse 29. It says, And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. And the multitude rebuked them, because they should hold their peace. Never forget that, that on almost every occasion, in order to get to Jesus, you have to get past the crowd. There's always people that are in the way, situations and circumstances in the way, and if you're going to get to Jesus, you've got to get through them. You've got to get past them. And that takes persistence. So the multitude rebuked them because uh, they should hold their peace. But they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received sight, and they followed him. This Gospel of Matthew uh, includes this particular account of two blind men who cried out to Jesus to work a miracle in their lives. Their passion quickly became evident to all, but as I just said, the crowd that was following Jesus um, began to rebuke them. They thought the master had better things to do than to waste time on these two blind beggars. So they began to chastise them, rebuke them, telling them to stay silent. And yet the two blind beggars only increased the volume of their pleadings. And the end result was that Jesus stopped and performed the miracle that those men needed. And I just want to bring to your attention this morning the importance of passion and the importance of what we are passionate about. I personally believe that there's not a person on the face of the earth that's not passionate about something. Now, I've met a lot of people that aren't passionate about the work of God, but they're passionate about something. Even people that are uh, sitting in church every Sunday, they're not always passionate about the things of God, but there are passions, things that, uh, that they cherish, things that they focus their attention upon. And passion that is in the right place, passion that is set, you know, as the Bible says, set your affections on things that are above. Uh, those kind of passions can overcome almost any obstacle and produce results when everything else has failed. And so with that in mind, we must be very particular with passion. We must be passionate about the right things. And when I talk about passion, I'm talking about what is it that you want more than anything else. Recognition, acceptance, money, those are actually trivial matters. We're only on this earth for 70 plus years and then it's appointed unto all of us to die. And after this, the judgment. This is simply the dressing room for eternity. And so we must be passionate about eternal matters. Those are the things that truly are going to matter in the end. What do, does our calendar look like? What does our bank account reveal about our passions? Our passions will direct the focus and the energy of our lives. And if we'll be passionate about the right things, it will produce miracles in our lives. So we need to choose our passions wisely today. And if we will do that, and uh, you can become passionate about something that you're not passionate about. How do you do that? you begin to feed that desire. Uh, I've noticed in my life that the closer I am to God, the more I'm praying, the more I'm focusing on the things of God, the less I desire the things of the world. But the more that I do those things uh, of the world, those trivial things, 
the less I desire the things of God because you can really only feed one passion. You can really only concentrate on uh, one thing being the main thing. And the late T.F. Tenney always said, you've got to keep the main thing the main thing. That's why we pray every morning. We're starting our day out saying, you know what, we're going to put our passions and our affections in the right place, and we are going to do the work of God. I thank you for doing that today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and let's just lift up his name. Let's stoke that passion for revival. Let's stoke that passion for the miraculous today, and let's believe God to move in our needs. Lord, we love and praise you this morning. We thank you, God, that we can come into your holy presence. We know that we are unworthy except for your blood that has made the difference, for your spirit that you placed in us. We thank you for your passion, God, for souls. We thank you that you loved us when we were unlovable. We thank you that you died for us when we were ungodly. We thank you, Lord, that you rescued us from the horrible pit of sin. And we just want to return, Lord, to you. We want to, uh, our passion, God, to reflect our thankfulness and our desire to be a blessing to your kingdom and, Lord, to somehow um, just give you honor and glory for what you have done in our lives. Where would we be, Lord, without you? We know where we would be. We would be dead. We'd be alone. We would be totally lost. We would be completely unhappy, miserable in this world if it were not for your presence. And we thank you that you have given purpose to our lives. Hallelujah. Lord, you are worthy of praise. You are the only God. You are worthy of all of our praise this morning. And we lift you up. We glorify your name. We pray, God, that your kingdom would come that your will would be done today in earth as it is in heaven. In every need, God, we, we believe today for a little slice of heaven, a place where there is no sorrow, a place where there is no pain, a place, Lord, where there is no sickness. And today, God, that's what we desire is just a little piece of our future, a little piece, God, of what it's going to be like there. And so we bring these that are sick in their body, and we believe, God, for you to heal them today. Those, Lord, that are suffering in their mind today, in their spirit, we believe for relief today for them. In the name of Jesus, you see the unspoken needs for Judy's grandson, Michael, for her granddaughter, Rebecca, today. We believe for them today, God, that you're going to move in their situation. We pray for Stacy today that you would comfort her heart in Jesus' name. Lord, you see what she's going through right now with the loss of her father after just recently coming through a heart surgery herself. Lord, be with her. Be with Brother Scott Smith and his family today. God, comfort their hearts and strengthen them in the loss of his mother. We pray for Scott Hutchinson and for others today who have uncertainty when it comes to their job. We pray, God, that you would provide for them. We pray for Carmen, Lord, as she settles in to her new job. We thank you, Lord, for uh, bringing her through this week and helping her to get settled in. We pray, God, your continued blessing upon her. We pray for Leslie Sutton today. Lord, you see the situation that she's in right now with needing surgery for multiple breaks in her ankle, and all the bumps and bruises that she sustained yesterday. We pray, God, that you would minister your touch to her, that you would guide the surgeon, that everything would be able to be put back together where she will have great function of that ankle in Jesus name. We pray God for those who have been in the hospital recently, those who have had surgeries recently, God, that you would give them strength for recovery, minister your healing touch to them today. We pray for Jamie Joe's dad today. God, give him a strength in his body. Those who are battling cancer, Lord, you see Michael Boland and Linda Fox, Alicia Piero and Diane Escher, Lord, you know about their situation. You know, God, what Claire's going through and Marsha's friends, grandparents. We pray for Jenny Coffey, for James Graham's aunt, for Kathy Bloss, and for John Fitzgerald. We lift up Aaron Payne and Kathy Burks. We pray for Kay and Dennis Phelps, for Sylvia Larimore and Ari Bowers, for Edie Percival, for Dell Bishop and Lydia and Philip Randall, for David Harris and Tanya Schutz, for Dwayne Lewis and Nathan Van Ingman, 
for Lisa Workman and Christy Smith, for Terry Adams' friend today. Lord, you are their healer. You are able, God, to do anything. We trust you today, Lord. We're looking forward to hearing more reports of, of miracles of healing, Lord, for these who have been battling these severe diseases, uh, these that are battling things that the world uh, says are, is incurable. But, God, you are the cure for every sickness and disease. We pray for those dealing with COVID right now. We pray for Landon Cummins, for Janice, Dana, and Shelley, for Haddon today, for Janie Parrott, for Ashley. Lord, for all the active cases in Stoddard County right now, we believe, God, for healing for each of them. Lord, these who have other lung and respiratory conditions, we believe for their healing, for Bonnie, for Cheryl, for Robbie and Kendra, in Jesus' name. These children today who need your touch, we pray, Lord, that you would touch baby Elsie and baby Brantley. Lord, that you would touch Myra and Lorelei and Jenna and Tucker, in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for Abel Ray, for Tano Lopez, for Abram Page, for Christian and Titus today, God. Touch them in their body right now. Minister healing of diabetes. Uh, we pray for those with Parkinson's disease, God, that this would be the day that they would receive their touch. Uh, hallelujah. We pray, God, for those uh, who are recovering from stroke, for Brother Huey, for Kelly and Shannon, for Sheila, for Tina's mother. Lord, that they would be made completely whole. We pray, God, for those suffering with dementia today. Those suffering with diabetes right now, God, you are our healer, and we trust you, God, Lord, to bring these blood sugars back into normal range. We believe for our A1C scores to um, normalize in Jesus' name. Lord, those who are dealing with GI issues, you see Natalie today, Michael Parrott, Olivia, Pastor Godby's daughter, Terry Adams, and Regina's granddaughter, Aubrey, Lord, touch them, we pray. In Jesus' name, touch Heather Spence today. Lord, those with kidney issues, reach down, Lord, and begin to do your work right now, we pray. Let your virtue flow on their behalf. We pray for Jamie Jo, Lord, for healing of her liver. We pray for these who are dealing with heart issues today. Oh, God, you are the God that delivers us out of every affliction, and there's nothing that is too hard for you. We pray for those with back pain today, God, that they would feel your healing power right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We release faith right now. We believe your word, God. There's nothing that you cannot do. You're able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, the power that works through faith, that works through praise, that works through our passion being united with your passion today. Hallelujah. Have your way right now, God. We pray for those battling with MS today, those dealing with shingles right now. God, touch them, we pray. Hallelujah. Barbara and Bob today need your touch. Lord, we pray for these others with health needs this morning, for Morgan, for Kevin Gossett, for Chloe, for Shirley Ruminer, for Mary, for Shirley Garner, for Nicole, and for Regina Bishop. We lift up Bobby Larmy and Jimmy Holden today. Oh, hallelujah, we pray for Meredith right now, believing for her healing. For those on hospice today, Lord, you see my grandfather, you see the family, Lord, we pray you would be with them, that you would strengthen, give comfort and peace in that situation. We pray that for JB and his family today, God, that you would be with them in this difficult time. Hallelujah, you are faithful, Lord. We pray for these families who are in need today, James and Angela and their family, Dee Dee's biological father and his family. We pray for Annette and Dave and for Grace's best friend and her family today. Lord, you see Alicia's needs, moving her home, moving her family today, God. We pray for Rebecca Rush and for her family. You see the unspoken need and you know the seriousness of that situation that they're dealing with, God. We pray, God, your hand upon that family today. We pray for Marcia and Britt, God, give them direction. Give them wisdom in dealing with this situation with Josh. We pray for Debbie's family. We pray for baby G's adoption, Lord, that everything would go through according to your will. Lord, you see those in our family who are lost, those who are discouraged, those friends of ours who have never known you. Every spiritual need matters the most to you today. It takes priority over every physical need. We know we've seen that in your word. When you healed the man that they let down through the roof, you first dealt with his sin before you even approached the apparent 
problem that he was suffering with that, that everyone could see. We believe today, God, for you to move in these spiritual needs for Regina's family, for Art Chandler, for Marcia's family, for Cheryl's family member, for Josiah, for Terry's children, for Andrea, and for the Vaughn family, for Demarcus, for Haley and Evie and Rose, for Carl and Connor. We pray for these who are struggling with drug addiction today. Lord, break the chains that bind them today. We pray for Dylan and Charles, for Dalton and Dan and Josh and Jamie. In Jesus' name, we pray for our Mingo Residential Care residents. Lord, those who have been attending our services, those who have repented and been baptized, we believe, God, for them to be filled with your spirit. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. We pray, God, for Sister Pam's children, for our Job Corps students, for Charles and Amber Gossett, for Barbara Owens, for Jennifer and Brenda's family, for Sheila Outlaw, for Marcia's friend and her family, that they would begin to attend church, Lord. We believe for Judy and Mike's family, for Mark and Caitlin, for Beulah's family, for Caroline's family today. We believe for revival to break forth in every church, in every community. Lord, let truth be declared. Let revelation come, God, to those who need you today. Let light shine in a dark place in Jesus' wonderful name. We pray, God, for our missionaries here in Missouri, our new missionaries on status in Kabul, in Bloomfield, in Branson. We pray for the Brelands in Perryville, God, that you would continue to bless the work there, that you would show them open doors and help them to step through, God, into the victory that you have for them in that city. We give you praise and glory for it today. You're moving in our midst, God, and we worship you for it. We thank you and we praise you for all that you're doing. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. You are worthy of our praise and our service today. God, let your will be done through me. Use me as your vessel. Use us today, God, to do your work, and we give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today. Thank you for praying with me. It's been a wonderful week in prayer. I encourage each one of you uh, to continue your prayers, whether we're praying together or separate. Uh, God hears our prayers, and he is answering in his time and his way, and we're trusting him for the answers to all of our needs. I'll see you again right here on Facebook Live, Lord willing, Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. Join me, invite someone else to be a part of this prayer group, and let's see God continue to bless.